So uh, we, we kind of flip between different names on this, but just in the whole thought of branding, <laughs> um, we're calling this uh, Advanced Grazing Systems. Um, the point of this program is to be that entry level space for farmers uh, to come in and learn. And um, uh, we have a few strategies of the way we're going to be hopefully doing it. Um, so the need. So basically, I'm going to just jump back to the strategic uh, planning process there. I had a few conversations through that, uh, where there was a need for ex essentially succession planning within extension. Um, and specifically on rotational grazing, although forages in general. Um, and then since I had that, those conversations, it seems like I keep hearing it over, over and over and over where people keep saying that there's just not those knowledge resources um, out there on the landscape. So um, we're hoping to fulfill that need with this, um, where we can have that information available for those that want, want to do the practice of rotational grazing. And so we need a few things. There's, there's the people succession planning. And then there's also, we're also hearing about resources that are maybe aging or need to be translated or need just to be updated with the latest research. And, um, and so it's about also managing resources as well. Um, we also, there's, there's also a need to provide that ongoing support for experts as well. Um, and this is just the way it is across, across the board. If anyone has school-aged children, they know about PD days, but do we do that in extension? And uh, we don't give the support to extension on how to teach or how to convey, you know, why someone should be doing a specific BMP. Um, and likewise, we have to understand how to, uh, what the, the mechanism is around BMP adoption. Um, and then we also have to understand that rotational grazing takes time. There's some BMPs that, you know, they can be adopted quite quickly um, and others take take time they take a learning process and so it's a little bit of a trial and error uh you know uh event and and that's how we have to approach it uh so this program um it's a four-year program through farmers for climate solutions uh, so we're partnering with them to develop the content and we are implementing um, their portion of the program. Um, and as well, as uh, Cedric will talk about, there's uh, the OFCAF program, which is a much shorter time window and in a smaller geographical area. Um, that being said, once we build these systems and resources, uh, really we can scale up quite quickly. So anyone that wants to participate in the program should be able to quite easily. And the strategy around the whole program, thinking about the needs is around how information flows in rural communities. And it's through social learning and peer-to-peer -peer learning. Uh, we're going to be really looking at relevant content, which Steve's been awesome at putting together. Um, program program uh, frameworks for provincial implementation. So this is where at the national level, uh, we set out kind of a framework, but then there's lots of choice within that as each province comes to us and we have our discussions. You know, I don't think there's any two that are going to do it exactly the same. And so it's really interesting to see how they're using the resources that they have on the ground and what they know with their, you know, their members. And, and so it's easier to work that way um, where you build a lot of flexibility into that system. And we wanna uh, do online and on-demand learning. So we will have the traditional face-to-face -face type uh, learning events, but we also don't wanna leave anyone out. So if there's someone that's more remote or their schedule doesn't allow to attend workshops, they can still access the information, uh, resource use. So um, everyone met Amber and she's been amazing going through and finding all these resources. So we wanna make sure that if something already exists, let's use that. Um, and then we can also find gaps. Although 
happily, we're not finding huge gaps. We're finding some things that need to be updated, but not massive gaps in knowledge. So that's that's helpful. Um, and we're also bringing in a social science research component to this uh, program. So that'll be interesting to follow through. Um, just watching how that, that mentorship process helps with BMP adoption. So the three main players in this program are CFGA, uh, provincial partners, and then the mentors. Uh, so there's, we are handling the content creation, course design, program impl implementation, managing that research process, um, ensuring that there's funding there and stakeholder engagement. And then the provincial partners are leveraging their networks and their extension ex expertise that they already have, uh, training experts on rotational grazing, and then the support for mentors uh, at, who are doing workshops. And then the mentors, um, they may be extension uh, experts or they could be a really engaged farmer. Uh, so they will support tw approximately 20 farmer trainees um, and they can do the traditional extension route with demonstrations and workshops, or they can do grazing clubs, or they can do uh, use the online system if that's, you know, they're, they take to it and they, they want to use it more. So there's many different ways that we can uh, work this um, program, and a lot of the content just transfers depending on how you're going to, to present it to the farmers. So we have three main pieces as well to how this program, how it's going to be implemented. So, or stages, I should say. So there's training the mentors first. Um, right now, they're pretty discreet. So there's training the mentors and then having the mentors train the farmers and then working with the, uh, what we would call a community of inquiry where we can support those mentors and farmers longer term because this process does take time. Uh, so right now it's, you know, we're because we're in the development phase, it's we're going to do this and then we're going to do the second stage and then the third stage. But over time, these are going to blur together. And so we'll have hopefully mentors training all the time and mentors training farmers all the time. And those mentors and farmers getting that support that they need when they have a question or, you know, are stumped with something, they can go to that community and, and begin sorting through the problems. Um, and so we, through the Farmers for Climate Solutions program, there's been an allocation for so many mentors per province. And that's because those mentors are being uh, paid or have a, a stipend essentially through Farmers for Climate Solutions. However, that is that, like I said, the mentorship program can be uh, wide open. So for example, uh, Cedric's been um, doing, there's two sessions uh, in Atlantic Canada and Farmers for Climate Solutions had uh, one mentor allocated for Atlantic Canada for rotational grazing. And they, uh, <laughs> Cedric pulled together, was it 56 people in the first session, Cedric? Well, there was 56 registered. We had 35 that attended. Okay. Still though. So, so there you go. So now we have, you know, a lot more people compared to just one person who is knowledgeable. And these people, you know, they work all throughout the industry. And so, you know, it's just a topic of interest and they wanted to have this training and have those people there ready and willing to help other farmers. Um, and then the mentors training farmers, this really takes that, you know, that choice of how do you feel comfortable connecting with those in your community. And so once again, it's the traditional extension activities, they can choose to do it in a grazing club or online training. And then um, the community of inquiry. Um, and this is some people might be familiar with a community of practice or a community of interest. Uh, this one is specific to ongoing learning. And so one of the main differences is you have your social, so that's your peer-to-peer. -peer. You have cognitive uh, presence, which is simply the learning, like 
reading something or watching a video or, or that sort of stuff where people are paying attention and it's going into their working and then hopefully long-term memory. But the, the key difference is that instructional presence. So really keeping an eye on um, what questions are asked. Did someone ask a question and it sat there for two days and no one's answering it? So making sure that there's engagement, um, making sure that the design of the course will work for people to keep people engaged. Um, so that, that's one important piece. Um, assessment is another one. And we, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, and then, oh, I didn't finish the sentence, but support for teaching, communicating, uh, and I had an assessment actually was what I was gonna put there. So for that last point. So the contributors, the main players in this program so far have been Steve Kenyon, who has been doing all the content. Um, so that's been really fascinating uh, for me to go through it all. Uh, Amber, she's been just awesome and really like really good critical thinker, um, really helping to organize those materials. So we're doing things in different formats. And so just to make keep everything straight, she's been awesome. Uh, Cedric's been great at <laughs> networking us and if we need a contact, that's our first call. And Trudy is helping us edit everything. And we don't have anyone on there yet for translation, but I'm sure I will have a really good relationship with someone for translating everything. So, And we also had so much support uh, from a steering committee um, it that steering committee kind of ran its course. It was really great. We might go back to them, maybe periodically give them updates or if we need more information, they've been really awesome. I know Amber has also reached out to people to find some of those resources and they've just taken the time and been really great, um, really guided us, you know, whether it's, you know, the topic of the brand. So the, the name of the program all the way to, um, you know, the details of the program. Uh, Farmers for Climate Solutions. So there's been a few things. Um, there was, we took part in, I shouldn't say we, Cedric took part in developing a greenhouse gas quantification guide and there's an economics and there are these really big documents, but they're really, really useful and really helpful, um, especially, you know, as background information for this project. Um, so if anyone wants some interesting reading, it is actually interesting. It, it sounds dry, but it is quite interesting. Um, and then we also, I work with uh, a group. It's the Farmer Engagement Working Group uh, through uh, Farmers for Climate Solutions. And they, they're putting together all of the, uh, basically how they want their curriculum to roll out. And so I work with them and, and go back and forth uh, with them. And then, as of late, we've been having really great discussions with off-calf recipients. And I've got down here, Alberta, BC, Quebec, and Saskatchewan, um, but which is where CFGA is, but actually it extends further. I know Cedric's had more, more conversations than just uh, those four provinces. So um, yeah, it looks like there's a lot of support and need. Um, we keep hearing this need for this. Um, so a brief overview of the course development, um, we've been, just for other reasons, we got a little bit of a late start, so we're deep into the content development right now, so Steve has got all of his materials, he's already looking at editing when we're still <laughs> trying to organize everything, but um, we, uh, so we've got all those materials, and we, um, We've worked with Farmers for Climate Solutions to do this entire course under a Creative Commons non-commercial license. So that means someone can't just, they can take the materials and they can use them for anything. So anyone on this call, once the course is done, you, you are free to use the materials as, as they said, and do what you need with them to teach. Um, you can't charge for it. However, if you came back to uh, Steve, Farmers for Climate Solutions and CFGA, let's say you did want to charge for them. It's just a matter of asking for permission. So, um, so yeah, so it's very open, uh, open source type approach. Um, and we've been collecting and organizing resources 
and I should, by we, I mean, Amber has done the vast majority of that. And so this second point, the instructional design, that's right where we are right now, just editing, sending stuff off for translation, organization, making sure it makes sense for the mentors, for the farmer training. We're essentially going to have two courses, but we can take a lot of the course material from the mentor program and use it in the farmer training. So it works quite well that way. Um, the And then the community of inquiry, we're not quite there yet. We're still in the process of setting up the learning management system, um, have a meeting with them. Tomorrow we've got our you know, kind of our system set up, the look and the feel of it. And it's, we're waiting on being able to upload some of these materials that we're working on. So we're really close. We're working kind of in tandem with, as they're developing something, then we go in and, and make the changes we need. And hopefully we'll soon be up and running. Finding all the glitches and hopefully fixing them. <laughs> Um, for those that don't know about the program, um, the modules, um, they've changed a little bit for anyone that has seen this before. Um, we're doing uh, basically the technical aspects at the beginning, and then we're following up with a mentor training. The maritime training is actually different. They went through the mentor training first because that's actually how it started out. But it, this seems to make a little bit more sense um, just from a design standpoint. So we've got goals, concept, cell design, margins, year-round grazing, record keeping, uh, which is going to be critical. And I'm sure Cedric will talk about that going into the off-calf program and then mentor training. And then we're working on an eighth module. And some of that will be around case studies and looking at the template and how mentors may assess that. So if you look at this, the farmers, who are just going through just wanting to know about rotational grazing, uh, we're anticipating they'll do one through six. And then um, the mentors would also do that seven and eight. And our last slide here, this is some of the content, um, just the formatting and the, the types of content that will be avail available. And it's really to reach different types of learners. Some people wanna watch a video, some people wanna listen, and actually, I don't have that in there, but there is going to be just straight audio. So if a farmer is in their tractor and they, they want to listen, they, they can um, doing their hay this summer. Uh, so all, all sorts of different, I guess, tactics um, for people to choose the type of learning that they want to do. So. Anyone have any questions for me? There were a few uh, that came through. Um, I just tried to, to answer them in, in the text. Um, we are just falling behind schedule a little bit. Anything that, uh, anything that didn't get answered uh, in the chat that you'd like to pose to Carlene? I think it's an important to know. Carlene, maybe you can go back and, and take a look uh, at, at answering some of those in the chat. Um, and important to note that this is under construction and, and it, we are, you know, adhering to a co-development process with the provinces and making sure that, you know, provincial nuances to training is, is are fully integrated into the, into the materials. Um, you know, we don't want to something developed for, you know, for an Alberta context uh, being, being delivered in Ontario with the Maritimes or, or Newfoundland. It's, you know, the, the fundamentals are the same as we move across the country, but the way the fundamentals are deployed are certainly um, unique to each province. Okay, yeah, okay, next up, Serge, I'm gonna do that right now. Uh, I'm gonna share my screen and I'll talk about off -calf. So, Kaylee, help me out here. If 